Would you believe me if I told you one of the best vines for attracting hummingbirds to your pollinator garden goes by the name Devil's Shoestring in some areas? It's true, but you may know it better by another name, which I'll reveal in a bit. First, let's discuss a cousin of the Devil's Shoestring that ironically also has a biblical name, Cross Vine or Bignonia Capriolata for those who prefer the Latin. Cross vine is known for its large yellow and red trumpet shaped flowers that are super attractive to its main pollinator, the ruby throated hummingbird. Other pollinators such as native bees, butterflies and moths are also attracted to the blooms, but don't do much for pollination. The blooms appear early in the season and are present from March through May, making cross vine a great nectar source for returning hummingbirds. If you like a hungry hummingbird, are finding this content on native vines irresistibly interesting? Hover on over and pollinate that like button. Cross vine also has distinctive semi-evergreen foliage with leaves consisting of two leaflets and a tendril on each leaf stalk. Although it will lose its leaves in severely cold winters, they normally remain and may turn a nice reddish purple. The abundant foliage is used as a host plant by the rustic sphinx moth, and if you look closely at a cross vine, you may find the moth's impressive large green caterpillars. Cross vine is a large vine and can reach 30 to 50 feet in length with a six to nine foot spread. It tends to prefer growing up something rather than across the ground and is best trained up a large trellis, a fence, or sturdy dead tree snag. It can be trained to creep along the ground as a ground cover, but it really looks its best when climbing up some type of structure. It can spread from both seed and root suckers, so be sure to remove any sprouts in the large bean-shaped seed pods if you don't want it spreading. Cross vine handles pruning well, and it can be trimmed to keep it in check. It blooms on new growth, so it can be pruned back in the fall to just a few buds with no ill effects. While it can be found growing in the wild in partial shade, to maximize the awesome of its flower show, plant it in full sun. It prefers rich soils that are well-drained, but will grow in a wide variety of soil types even those that are occasionally wet or dry. This impressive vine is found throughout the southeastern United States. One word of warning, keep it away from buildings as it is quite flammable, as are many vines, if a fire were ever to get near it. And the tendrils it uses to climb can damage siding or masonry. And now we come to Cross Vine's cousin, the Devil's Shoestring, or as you may better know it, as Trumpet Creeper or Campsus Radicans, for those of you who prefer to speak plant nerd. Trumpet creeper is an absolute hummingbird magnet, which is a good thing for trumpet creeper, as hummingbirds are its main means of pollination. The large trumpet-shaped flowers also attract butterflies, moths, and native bees, though they do not provide much in the way of pollination. It has a long blooming period, and flowers will appear in clusters scattered along the vine from June to September. Flowers are replaced with long, bean-shaped seed pods that will persist into the winter, if you choose to leave them, which I'll explain in a moment. The pinnately compound foliage of trumpet creeper is attractive with a deep green upper surface and a much lighter lower surface, turning yellow in the fall. The caterpillars of the trumpet vine sphinx moth find it just as tasty as it is good looking and the vine serves as its host plant. When it comes to growing conditions, trumpet creeper is very adaptable and will grow in a wide range of medium to dry soils, can withstand compacted soils and doesn't require much water and is quite drought tolerant. It will grow in part shade to full sun, but to get the full glory of its floral show, it should be grown in full sun. Deer also tend to leave it alone, and if they do browse a little, it bounces right back. Trumpet creeper has a large range and can be found throughout the southeastern United States. You may be thinking, this vine sounds awesome. Hummingbirds, butterflies, grows nearly anywhere, survives drought and deer. Why doesn't everyone grow it? Wait, there's a catch, isn't there? Well, a few actually. If we classify its cousin cross vine as an aggressive plant, trumpet creeper kicks it up a notch and goes to 11. If anybody out there knows what movie I just referenced, let me know down in the comments. And also tell me what your favorite song from that film was. So what are the drawbacks of trumpet creeper? It can be a big vine from 30 to 40 feet long with a four to 10 foot spread. It grows quickly and can cover a tree in a season, if you let it. This is a vine best planted on a sturdy fence, trellis, or a solid dead tree snag. It can also spread by seed, which is why you may want to remove the seed pods and by root suckers. The suckers are easily kept in check with mowing or clipping, 
or it can be planted in your concrete, such as a driveway or walkway, which will inhibit the root suckers. One place this aggressive growth, suckering, and self-seeding does have an advantage is in erosion control. Trumpet creeper can be used to stabilize a steep bank as it will quickly grow across it in a thick, well-rooted mat that will provide cover for small critters and birds and be a hummingbird haven. Trumpet creeper can be pruned to keep it on a trellis or fence with no ill effects. And since it blooms on new growth, it can be cut back to three or four buds in the fall. Also, keep it away from buildings as it is flammable, just like its cousin crossvine, and can damage siding and masonry. One more warning. Some people do have a slight dermatitis reaction from contacting the foliage or sap, so be aware. The reaction is nothing like that from poison ivy and usually only lasts for a few minutes. If you are willing to deal with these drawbacks, Trumpet Creeper is definitely worth it. For the hummingbird and butterfly show it provides, not to mention the flower display is awesome. If you have ever dealt with Trumpet Creeper, good or bad, let us know all about it in the comments. Okay. I covered two vines that are great for hummingbirds, but maybe a little much for small garden spaces and maybe more upkeep than some people are willing to put into it. This next vine I'm going to talk about is also loved by hummingbirds, but is much, much easier to maintain in a small garden space. I am talking about coral honeysuckle or Lanistera sempervirens. For those of you who want to be sure you are getting the wonderful native vine and not one of the many exotic and invasive honeysuckle species. This is why those Latin names matter. Coral honeysuckle is named for its distinctive, tubular, bright red and yellow flowers that bloom early in March and April and will continue to bloom intermittently through May and June, and sometimes even later. This is another great vine to attract those early returning hummingbirds, and the blooms are also visited by all types of bees, butterflies, and moths. In addition, coral honeysuckle is a host plant for the spring azure butterfly and the snowberry clearwing moth. Another bonus comes from the small red berries that are present from midsummer into the winter or until the birds eat them all. The deep green foliage of coral honeysuckle is evergreen in all but the coldest winters, making it a plant with four season interest in the garden. While coral honeysuckle can form a large vine from three to 20 feet long and with a three to six foot spread, it does not grow as aggressively as trumpet creeper or cross vine and tends to stay on the trellis or structure it is grown on. It also does not spread aggressively by root sprouts or seed, which make it much better suited for smaller gardens. If it does need to be pruned a bit, do so after it quits flowering for the year, as it only flowers on new growth. Coral honeysuckle prefers medium moisture, well-drained soils, but will grow well in most garden settings if there aren't overly wet or dry soils. For the best abundance of flowers and the most prolonged flowering period, plant it in full sun. This is a great choice for any pollinator garden within its native range of the southeastern and east coast states, especially if you want to attract hummingbirds. As with other vines, keep it away from buildings as it is quite flammable if a fire ever occurs. If you want to maximize your garden's attraction to migrating hummingbirds, especially early in the season, check out this video on Eastern Columbine and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.